it was just that type of feeling of like, like shit was lifted off my shoulders where it's like, we can finally like get out, not get out the hood, but finally yeah. like provide differently yeah. than what we was doing, like living check to check and yeah. trying to figure out what's the next meal. Like watching your mom like not eat because she want to make sure the child eat. Mm. Like shit like that was like things that I've seen growing up that like hit way differently when you get drafted and it's like, we going to be all right. Like you can yeah. say it and like fully mean it instead of saying it and not knowing. Yeah. You know? So it was, it, it hit different. You ready? Mm -hmm. Got the nature going on in the back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, welcome everybody to another episode of Brand New Podcast. I'm your host, Neil, with my co-host co here, Joe Foy. How you? Yo. How are Happy you? Happy to be here, man. Cool, man. We got a special guest with us, man. It's yeah. been a long time since I've seen this dude, man. <laughs> Go Utes, huh? <laughs> Tennessee Titans, huh? Mm -hmm. yeah. Shout out to LA too, <laughs> South Central. Exactly. Wow. Well, yeah, we in the building. Yeah. yeah. We got Robert Johnson on this episode, man. Welcome, brother. Thank man. you. Thank you. We've been up man. to, man. Living, yeah. breathing. Yeah. As I'd always go, trying to stay out of the way and minding my own business. Yeah, yeah. staying grateful, man. That's awesome. Well, thank you, man, for you know thank for having me. Yeah. coming on here and vibing with us, man. It's a number of good vibes you like to send out to people and you know, just uh when I first met you, it was always a good vibe, you know what I mean? Thank so you. It, and the day that actually we met, I was uh I was cooking. Yep. And uh <laughs> my sister still says still says to me, is like, dude, Rojo Rojo wants those ribs, man. She was good. <laughs> he, he wants those ribs that you was cooking. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, after that, it's just anytime, anytime, yeah. anytime you're more than welcome. Our doors are open anytime, man. You're more than welcome to come eat my food, man. Thank you. Thank you. I'll be there. Shit. Yeah, with two man. plates. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so tell us. Tell us a little bit what you're doing now. I mean, we'll get, uh, get into, uh, you know, a little history of yourself, but uh, what you're doing now. Well, I mean, I'm crazy. That now, like I was just telling, I was telling your brother, like now I'm, um, Work for EA Sports, mm. which is um, is in the game. Completely, yeah. yeah. Game. What's in the game? Completely, yeah. <laughs> what is? In the game? Can't, 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 can't give the secrets to too much, nah, but, yeah, yeah. but it's um it's a crazy world to like have that dream job of being in the NFL, and then all of a sudden me being a big gamer playing video games, and like we all know about EA Sports. You know, yeah. you if you don't know about it, you haven't heard about it. Even if you didn't play games, you kind of know a little bit about EA Sports and. Yeah. It's just weird how, how, how life kind of comes full circle, as in dream job NFL, then went through six different jobs yeah. like after the NFL, then boom, I fall into EA Sports, mm -hmm. where I'm like uh, a video game designer. Yeah. It's weird. I've been doing this for about seven months now. Wow. And it's been an a, a, a awesome experience, but then on top yeah. of that, it's been just a whirlwind of like trying to learn some of the things that people behind the scenes do for a video game for a living where they got a degree in this yeah. and then me that's on the outside in they're teaching me this and they've been really really like great to me so it's been good damn man <laughs> well just hearing from your background you know where you come from and then now you're doing video gaming you're, you're <laughs> you know you're a designer and you'd be like I would just imagine motherfuckers like like us I would never be in that motherfucker I would play the motherfucker I would play uh -huh. the game you know uh -huh. what I mean but um, <clears throat> did you play video games? Is uh, so I mean, with you I being, did. With you, <laughs> well, okay, so it just kind of came naturally to you. Like it can't, it can't yeah. be out of trouble. Like, oh, that's all yeah. I was saying. Like it can't be from like a lot of the bullshit that was happening around me. Right. Where it's like the uncontrollable variables of life, like yeah. the shit that you can't control. It kept me away from it, so I was playing video games. And then it's just like you know having this opportunity to come up with EA where it's just like I don't have a degree in that yeah. and they like no you're good you have experience you've been playing for your whole life and it's like but I still don't know what it's like to program it code it all yeah. this different shit and yeah. it's like Damn. you're gonna learn it because yeah. we're gonna teach it to you oh. and it's like but I don't have the degree in it and it's like <laughs> but you have something else you have an NFL background and um, at EA it's no other NFL players that's on this creative team so oh, it's wow. like if I have the advantage over everybody and it's been going really, really well to have that little bit of an advantage, but also have like my team asking me questions and want to know as they're teaching me. So it's been like 
a trade for trade. Where oh, it's like, wow. I'm going to give you some of the inside school. Yeah. But help me with learning how to do this. How do I make this player do this? Yeah. And how do I create this? And they've been, like, helpful. So it's been good. That's cool, yeah. man. That's very awesome. Is it? Um, what is your uh, degree in? I have a sociology degree and a criminology degree. And then oh, wow. junior college-wise, I have a degree that I don't really count it, but interdisciplinary studies, which mm-hmm. is making sure to get all the major, let me get all the uh, general eds. Yeah. I got yeah. all the general eds out the way early yeah. and was able to get that degree before coming out here to University of Utah. Oh, dang, dude. Nothing in gaming. Nothing. No, nothing. nothing. Just other, other than just playing. I mean, just, play, yeah, <laughs> just playing sports. <laughs> yeah. Dang, man. Yeah, let's get into that. What uh, um, high school? Uh, what sports did you play in high school? And then how did you end up in Utah? Because we all know that you went to the University of Utah, and then you played for the Titans for three years. So, yeah. uh, tell us a little bit about that. Well, um, I mean, to go back and some uh, when I was in my Watts days of in LA. I went to three different high schools. Um, wasn't a bad kid, yeah. but wasn't making the best decisions either. Yeah. So it's just like, <laughs> you know, you get bust, you get moved around, and that's how it is in the inner city. And, yeah. you know, it was a blessing that I got moved around so much. But my first high school was Jordan Down Project. Well, Jordan Down, which was Jordan High School, University of David Star, David Star High School, which is Jordan, and it's right by the Jordan Down Projects. Okay. And then um, after that, I transferred to Locke. I went to Locke like a year and a half and then mm-hmm. transferred from there to uh, Fremont and I graduated from Fremont and then as and in like a free agent as I it was pretty much <laughs> like I said it was a blessing the biggest blessing was that I was able to like have friends in different different parts of LA yeah so you know you got the east side and you got the west side I was able to have friends in both sides yeah. so it was like really good I wasn't like an east side baby and like continue to only only fuck with east side people right, it was right. like I was able to mingle, you know, yeah, around the yeah. neighborhood. People know somebody or I know of somebody or they know of me. So yeah. it was like really good. Then I went to the nearest junior college after graduating from Fremont um, 2005. I wound up going right to uh, my junior college so I walking distance, Southwest Community College. Mm-hmm. Um, and I went there. I got my saddlebag. Saddlebag, <laughs> by the way. Go, Jones. <laughs> so, yeah, we, we definitely uh, played John's Grimms game. They don't, they, they, saddlebag don't know what to do with me. I lost a couple people. Yeah, you can find okay. that on YouTube. Talk, talk, talk your shit. Couple. Talk your shit. Uh, okay. uh, yeah, they couldn't stop me. But, um, but yeah, at Southwest, um, my first year, I didn't play at all. My yeah. first year, I didn't play. I just ran track. Mm. And then um, my second year, I wound up playing. And the only reason I wound up playing is because my brother, that was a year older than me, like, Rob, we need to play together. And my mom was like, yeah, I didn't play since I was kids and shit yeah, like that. Yeah. You know, I was like, yeah, I'll play, whatever. And um, it happened that I had a pretty good season that one that one season. And um, then Coach Sataki, shout out to Coach Sataki. Love hey. him to death. Like, that's family. BYU still sucks. That's how I feel. But <laughs> <laughs> I want the best for Coach Sataki. Like, like I, I love him, his family, mm. his, his, um, his, his everything about him. Yeah. He helped me so much. And developing the type of person that I am today yeah. because of him, because mm. um, he took that risk yeah. on a skinny inner city kid. Uh-huh. You know, he came up to uh, Southwest Community College and he was looking at somebody that was playing football for uh, Citrus College, Josh Broden, um, and I just was having a pretty good game, and it worked out. Where after he just like asked me about, I know you got teams talking to you. I'm like, yeah. nah, nobody's talking to me, yeah. nobody at all. And he's like, really? I'm like, nobody. Yeah. So you got any film? I ain't got no film either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I don't have shit. He's yeah, just yeah. like, okay, well, can I get this game? And I'm like, yeah, he got the game. And then that's when everything started to happen. And then I wind up here in Utah. And, um, you know, it, it's been that um, setting up the dominoes. And they've just been falling. They've been yeah, tumbling the right yeah. way. Some of them been falling off, but it's been Yeah, some good effects. The, yeah, it's, the it's, been, it's been pretty yeah. good the way it's yeah. been going. And, you know, boom, here. Went played in the NFL, drafted the fifth round to the Tennessee Titans, and yeah. then uh, moved back. Yeah. So you know, but it's yeah. been it's been that struggle of not trying to identify myself, but trying to figure out what am I good at. Yeah. And it took one coach, Coach Sataki, that had that he seen something different than to right. see just an inner city black kid that's just trying to get out. He seen it as like I was trying to figure out a way to be a man. So mm-hmm. it was really good. Mm-hmm. Really good. Dang, that's awesome. And then uh, from there, you just went to the Titans, man, right? Yeah. Tell us about that whole draft, draft thing. Man. Oh man, like, um, like I talk about it all the time. Like, it's um, 
it, it, it's like winning the lottery. That's yeah. what I would say. And I tell people this. It's like, uh, I tell kids this. It only happens one time. Mm-hmm. It only happens one time. It's never a redo. It's never, it can happen again. It happens just one time. And um, when it happened, I was in LA and I just remember, um, I remember telling my mom because my mom was just like, okay, so if you don't get drafted, it's all right. You know, big playing yeah, the mom yeah, card. Yeah, like, yeah, oh, you, yeah. you still had it really. And I'm like, mom, I'm not worried about being drafted. My thing was just, you know, um, having having people notice me, having people know of me. You know, it's like, like I'm not just known in Utah. It's like it might be a coach or somebody that's like, yeah. I've seen film and know you. So that made me feel even more better than anything because it's like, um, somebody would know me if I go outside this. If I go outside this Utah or California, somebody might be like, "That's the player that played at Utah." Yeah, and um, that draft was like, that was the year the safeties. I said that was the year the safeties. That was the year that um, uh, Earl Thomas got drafted, um, Cam Chancellor, uh, Eric Berry, Ooh. Um, uh, uh, the USC safety that was they looked good in, in shoulder pads. He wound up going to the Forty Niners, um, and he played. He played at USC. And um, oh, he played safety. Um, gosh, uh, Taylor Mays. Taylor Mays. Taylor Mays. Yeah, Taylor Mays. Uh, Nate Allen. Um, you know, Man, it was a, it was it, it was a, it was a, it was a body of safeties that year that wound up being drafted, and I really didn't feel like I was even part of that yeah, like elite yeah. club. I didn't feel like it. I didn't feel like it at all. You know, I, yeah. I didn't feel like I related to some of their accomplishments, even though I had big accomplishments oh, in Utah. But I just oh, man. You know, but I, was, yeah, short. But I was selling myself short a <laughs> lot because I was just like, a lot of people didn't show me the respect that they needed yeah. because I was at Mount West. Right. But it worked out, man. It happened. And like, you get that random phone call. It's like that random number that yeah. like pops up and it's like, okay, what to do? I remember sitting in a hotel that morning because um, I couldn't sleep that night. I was... Yeah. Because the way that the draft was set up was different than what it is set up now. The first night was just straight first round. Yeah. Then the next night was uh two to two to four. Yeah. Then the following day was five to rest to the end. You know, and um, I woke. I remember couldn't sleep that the, the second night. And I'm like, my agent just give me a hotel. I need to get away. And like slept at the hotel. Woke up. That call was. That call was at ten o'clock. I remember it was like around ten ish. Like when it happened, that yeah. call came in. And it just was like, oh shit, what to do? Like, like the phone yeah. is ringing. I'm like, yeah. do? like, no, answer, answer. I'm like, all right, I'm gonna answer, answer. And I grabbed it. And as I was answering, um, the Washington, the Washington Redskins was on. They it said pick selected. So it like came in, it's like the pick select. And I'm like, it could be Washington because they call and they just like, is this, hey, is this Robert? And it's like, yeah, hold on. They don't tell you anything else. So hold on, we're gonna transfer you. And it's like, all right. And I'm like, hey. I think it's the Washington Redskins. And it's like, oh, it's the Washington Redskins. I guess it's the Washington Redskins. You know, like, pick in, watch the Redskins. Gosh. I'm on the phone. And then it's like, um, as I'm on the phone, I talk to the general manager. Um, and I don't know general managers like that. So, yeah. But Adams was like, hey, I want to walk you to the team, and I'm going to get you straight to the head coach. Coach Fisher, Jeff Fisher. I'm on the phone with Fisher. I still don't know what fucking team I'm with. I still don't, I don't know. Like I, I'm thinking it's Washington, and I'm like, tell him, it's Washington. I'm talking to Jeff Fisher, and he talks to me for about like 10, 15 minutes, and he said, okay, I'm going to transfer you to the defensive coordinator, Chuck Cecil. Transfer me to the defensive coordinator. I still don't know what team I'm with. Wow. Chuck is like, man, we got the system that you're going to fit in. Like, the way that you played in college is what we love, and right. yada, yada, yada. He said, okay, I'm going to transfer you to your defensive back coach. Transfer me to the defensive back coach. Now, I've been on the phone for like an hour. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I still don't know what team other than it's the Washington Redskins. <laughs> That's all I know. Yeah. And like, man, I'm talking to I'm talking to my 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 safeties coach. Talking to him, man. We chopping it up, going back and forth about, yeah, I want you, this, this, that. Then he said, I'm gonna transfer you back to Coach Fisher. Transfer me back to Coach Fisher. And this is like an hour and a half into the call. And then he said, I want to welcome you to the Titans. And I'm like, oh. Okay, yeah, cool. Yeah. I'm like, well, shit. Yeah, like, yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm excited, you know. And he said, hold on, I'm gonna transfer you because you got a press conference, and I had a press conference over the phone. So he transferred me to one of our business ladies, and when he transferred to the business lady, I just remember telling the part, my, my spouse that was there then, and just was like, oh, it's, the, it's, the, it's the Titans, and she like, what? I'm like, Tennessee Titans, and she's like, where is that at? I'm like Memphis, yeah. <laughs> like Memphis. Like I, I know the Titans, but it's like I never knew where it was at. I'm like Memphis, like, 
And like, whatever, jumped on the phone, did the press conference, and everything was just like, it went smooth after that. Yeah, it went yeah. really smooth. And then I got to one of the other funny stories about like, this, like I said, it's like, you get, it's a, it's a millionaire. It's like, yeah. you won, like, oh, the shit's a lot of. Yeah. I just remember one of the ladies was like, um, that I was on the phone with that runs everything. She's the PR. She said, okay, I need you to give me some simple information. You're going to forget some stuff. She said, I talk to all type of athletes that forget things. I'm like, oh, I ain't going to forget shit. She's like, okay, what's your name? I'm like, Robert. Like, what's your last name? Johnson. I'm like, Where you live? I'm like, LA. I live in LA right now. And then she said, what's your phone number? I'm like, oh, yeah, I got that. I gave her my phone number. And then she said, okay, so what's your social security number? Oh, shit. I was like, no, it wasn't just a job. I was like, oh, shit, I can't even remember. And she said, we'll come back to it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that was like, like, and I was just so, like, my mind was so just like, I need to make the roster and this, this, that. And she just like, let me know. She mm-hmm. said, this is why you're going to forget something because you just got drafted. Yeah. So things kind of change, you know, yeah. and I, I forgot my social security number. Like I forgot like something simple that I say all the time. I forgot it, but yeah, it was, it was um a shocker and it was more of um reality. Like, like I really made it. Like I, and once that happened, I like, you know, I was like, I got to grind, you know, the next step is getting the weight room. So next step, I jumped right in the way. Like, as soon as I got done talking to Tennessee Titans, they got my plane ticket for three days later to get me to Nashville. I wind up, like, that as soon as I got off the phone, I'm like, I got to go work out. Mm. I got to work out. Like, fuck everything else. I got to go work out. Yeah, and, yeah. And I just remember my partner, she's like, no, you got to go tell your mom. Like, no, fuck telling my mom. Like, I got to tell my brother. I got to go work out. Like, yeah. I got to make this damn roster. And, yeah. you know, it, it was it was a it was a crazy reality. Like, like this really happened. Like, I was mm. like... I'm from South Central. I'm from the inner city where you can't even, it's hard to even imagine getting out of the high school. It's hard to imagine being alive after 18. Yeah. You know, and it's like, I'm, I just got drafted. My name just got called and whoever was watching, you know, they know, you know, they know that's me because yeah. it was me. And it's like, damn, like this is, this is really happening. Yeah. You know? So it was, it was cool. It was a different, different feeling, like a blessing. Like a, oh yeah, like it's definitely. Like, all of a definitely. sudden it's like, like shit was just like lifted off my shoulders. It was like I can buy my mom a house now. Like I can like I can like get all my brothers and my sisters like different things without like feeling like it's going to be. Like, I can't give you this because I don't have it. It's like oh, I I got it now. It's like yeah. I got it. Even though I didn't have it, yeah, like yeah. it's like but I got it. Like it's yeah. going to happen. Like you're going to get this house, mom. You're going to yeah. get like my brothers. You're going to get you're going to get the amount of bread that you need because yeah. whatever you need, I got you. You know. Yeah. But it was just that type of feeling of like. Like shit was lifted off my shoulders, where it's like we can finally like get out, not get out the hood, but finally yeah. like provide differently yeah. than what we was doing, like living check to check and yeah. trying to figure out what's the next meal. Like watching your mom like not eat because she want to make sure the child eat, mm. like shit like that was like things that I've seen growing up that like hit way differently when you get drafted, and it's like we gonna be all right. Like you can yeah. say it and like fully mean it instead of saying it. And not knowing, you yeah. know, so it was, it, it hit different. Yeah, mm-hmm. man. And it just, it, it kind of sounds like just everything that you just talked about, is you like, in the right place at the right time. Like with Sitaki finding you, you know what I mean? It's just a blessing in disguise where you, you was just there. Mm-hmm. That, for me, I believe God puts you in certain places for a reason. There's a reason why God God has put you there. You know, you're totally right, and like that's that's what I've been living by. Is yeah. like just making sure that you think nobody's paying attention to you, nobody's yeah. watching you. People are watching you, yeah. no matter how how little it is or how big it is of an accomplishment that you're doing. People are watching you. Yeah. Like I got drafted to the Tennessee Titans, and they never even talked to me at all. Never, They're, they never talked to me. But my position coach is from Pasadena. Yeah. Marcus Robertson, like he's from Pasadena. Mm-hmm. He's best friends with my head trainer at my junior college. Mm. So it's like crazy how it like runs way deeper. And I'm like, why the hell did y'all draft me? Like, yeah. what was the point of drafting? Y'all never even talked to me. He said, well, me being from Pasadena, I kept an eye on Sean Smith. Yeah, that played Sean corner. Smith, yeah. Sean is from Pasadena. He said the whole time during your junior year that we went undefeated, they was paying attention to Sean Smith. Yeah. They was paying attention to him because he's from his neighborhood. He knows a couple of the family members. So he was watching Sean, yeah. but he said 
17, number 17 kept popping up on film. Oh, okay. So it kept popping up on film my junior year. They didn't draft Sean. Sean wanted to go to Miami. But the point that I'm saying is that they was watching Sean my junior year. And then now my senior year, he said, we just kept an eye on you. Yeah. Kept an eye on you. You had a really good season. Yeah, so yeah we well, felt, uh, 13. I think it was 13. I, 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 wind, I wind up ending my season. With, I, I ended my career with 13. I had six that senior year. Oh, okay. so, they, so they kept yeah. they kept tabs on me. Yeah. And, and it goes back to what you just said, where it's like, you never know who's watching you. Yeah. Like it my my scholarship to the University of Utah came from somebody watching somebody from another team. Yeah. Coach Taki watched yeah. somebody else. And then I wind up getting here. Yeah. And then my way of being drafted to the NFL is because the coach was watching right. somebody else that was on my right. team. Right. And it just happened to be that I was doing what I was supposed to have been doing, which yeah. is just having fun playing football. Yeah. And it just happened. And I'm like, shit, that's crazy. Well, you're just doing your job. Yeah, yeah. And, then, and then and then it goes back, it's like it goes back into like I, your your head trainer at your junior college that was your trainer, she's my best friend. So mm-hmm. when I found out about you, I reached out to her and she passed the message of like, he's a good kid. I've watched him. I've watched him throughout two years of being at the, being at the junior college. It's not just football for him. It's way differently. Yeah. She vouched for me. And mm-hmm. that's what it turns into. Like I tell people nowadays where it's like, it's not about... It's not about what you know; it's who you know. That's what you always hear, right? And I'm like, dive the deep. Yeah. You yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I'm like, I'm like, dive deeper into that. Like, I'm like, dive deeper. When you become an athlete, yeah, it's about who you know. It's, yeah. You know, people, but it's about who knows you. Mm-hmm. Who the hell will vouch you for you? Right. Like, that's what it turns into because you might not have never even shook this person's hand. You might not even have a conversation with them, but they're a big fan of you. Mm-hmm. They're a big fan of you. Would they vouch you for you when it comes to getting a job? Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, and, and it's like, yeah, you might you might know this person, but will this person vouch you for you? Have you was your first impression with this person money? Was this good? Was this like a, a natural you being nice to this person, or was this an asshole move of like I'm not signing that because I don't know you? You know, well if this person is next, well if this person's a judge yeah. and you did something that you like, I can get away with. But this judge remember you being an asshole to him about not signing something just right. because it's like I don't know you. Yeah, so it's about. What can this person who will vouch for you? That's yeah. why I've been living by it. Yeah. So it's like now people vouch for me, so it's been help, it didn't work yeah. out for me. <laughs> yeah. And when they vouch, you gotta be truthful it as well. Be, yeah. You know what I mean? It's just like recruiting when when coaches would call for players, certain players on the high school team. I gotta tell these coaches that I'm talking to from the colleges that because I want to get a re- good report. It's like, you can trust that coach. He'll tell you the truth. Mm-hmm. And I got to tell them the truth about my players, where their weak, where weakness is at, where their strengths are at, you know. So mm-hmm. that's kind of what you're you're saying. Right yeah, now, it turns so. into like um, you represent, you're not just representing yourself when you're going yeah. through this. You represent everybody that has been right. there for you. Um, coach Pease, Coach Pease that was over at the University of Utah, uh, he passed away. You know, that was one of my – I coach Peas retired, then came back my uh, junior year when we went undefeated, and he was a defensive line coach. But I always was connected close to him for some reason. I always talked to him about just life. It was never about mm-hmm. football. I just talked about life. Mm-hmm. Coach Pease vouched for me during yeah. my pro day. Yeah. He vouched for me during my pro day. Like it was, it was scouts that was there that was asking questions about what is Robert about because I didn't go to the combine. I wasn't invited to the combine, and I had a pretty good camp. I mean, a pretty good uh train. Um, uh, pro day, mm-hmm. but nobody knew of me. Nobody really knew Coach P's vouching for me through all the scouts. Where it's just like, you're not just getting a player, man. You're getting a person that can be good for the community. Yeah. Also be good for as a player, but he's a good person. Mm. He vouched for me, and I and I, I tell Coach P's all the time, like Coach, when scouts was telling me that it was a coach named Coach P's that was really vouching for me. I'm like, you changed my whole life because yeah. you seen something completely different than what everybody else was seeing. Yeah. It's like he's a good player, but what is he outside of football? And that's how it always turned into. Yeah. Oh, oh man, that's <laughs> awesome, man. Just to, you know, go through your, your journey has been a journey, you know what I mean? <laughs> it, 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 whether it's been hard or easy, it, it, you, you've had a journey, and the journey still continues of what you're doing right now. So, yes. Um, man, I really want to talk about this. I, not too much, but you know, <laughs> just give give your experience and your thoughts, man. How was it being in that Sugar Bowl versus Alabama? But what was oh, that? Man. Like, man. So, uh, that, five? that was that was a late that was oh, a late, oh, yeah, oh, late. that was the second year that we went undefeated. Um and uh man, that week that week leading forward like leading up to yeah. it, like 
when we when we beat BYU, we whooped their ass and like we, <laughs> we turned around like yeah, we, we whooped their ass. Shout like, out to BYU. Like, like, like we we, we panted like when we yeah. beat them. Like as soon as we whooped them, we was like yeah. we for sure gonna get invited to a BCS. And I just remember uh, me and a couple of the boys. Um, we went to Florida. That's mm. what we wanted. We wanted Florida. Mm. We wanted Florida because Urban Meyer was there. Yeah. And then Tim Tebow, you know, and they had a really good ass offense that was like explosive. But yeah. we wanted Florida. Defense wise, yeah. we wanted Florida. Because mm. we was like, if we can go in and have Coach Witt, it's going to be like Coach Witt against Urban. Yeah. And everybody used to always talk about uh, Alex Smith here, which is the undefeated season at the yeah. DPS. Yeah. So yeah. Everybody was talking about how powerful that offense was. And I'm like, this year, this undefeated, it was the defense. We felt yeah. like defense wise, we can hang with anybody. Yeah. And we was like, Florida put match up oh, yeah. perfect with You guys yeah. had uh, right. Cougar uh, uh, on the we had, line. We had, yeah, we had Paul Cougar. We had Cole Misi. Yeah. And then um, inside, we had Kanape. Star was even on our team, too. But yeah. Star didn't play much because he was oh, a freshman. Okay. But we had we had, um, we had Kanape. We had uh, Leigh Tyler Maval. Uh, Derek Shelby was rotating in and out, too. And that's just the D-line by itself. Yeah. And then we go to that, that next level, which you had Steven Sylvester, Mikey Wright, Keppa Geisen. Um, you had uh um you had Bo you had you had Bo Anderson, you had uh Mo Neal. We had like a, a good group of linebackers. Wow. And then the secondary wise, like, we was loaded secondary, we had Sean Smith, Sean Smith then yeah. we had Bryce McCain, Joe Dale, yeah. um, and then it was me. And then we also had Brandon Burton as our nickel. We had uh we had Brandon Burton as our nickel, we had um Terrell Cole as our backup. We had um we had we had like a, a lot of we had a lot of individuals like yeah. R J Stanford like we had a lot of individuals that was like on defense wise we knew that we can hang with anybody we yeah. knew for a fact that whoever we lined up against if we just play to what our strengths are mm-hmm. we can whoop anybody yeah. and we wanted we wanted Florida we wanted Florida bad but yeah. we were sitting that, that in that BCS party and it's like boom Alabama popped up and then when Alabama popped up we was like. Shit, we're gonna whoop them. We want like that's what we said. We said yeah. we're gonna whoop them because yeah. we knew what they can't stop. Yeah. They can't stop speed. Mm-hmm. On defense, Coach Anderson set us up like perfectly where everybody was playing a strange position. Mm-hmm. Well, we didn't fit the position, but we fit the scheme. Mm-hmm. And his thing was like the scheme overrides anything. Mm-hmm. And Alabama, power offense. How are they gonna stop y'all? Y'all faster than them. Get to the damn quarterback, make plays. Do what you've been doing at the beginning, which is see ball, get ball, make plays. And that was just it. That's yeah. and then we seen it was like okay we got Alabama like yeah we're going we're gonna roll on them on defense yeah. we know offense is gonna do is like we're gonna roll on them on defense yeah. like our thing is we stop you you can't score we get the ball from you we can score yeah. on offense or we get the turnover and go score ourselves yeah so it's like shit we was we was hogs man I mean I just remember <laughs> being on the edge of my seat watching the game the whole from 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 the start and by like you know towards the end of the fourth quarter I kind of just relaxed but I bet. I bet there are Alabama fans who just kind of just relax like this, like, okay, we're playing a team from Utah. You know, we're playing Utah Utes, like, uh-huh. really? And uh-huh. I bet at, by the end of that fourth quarter, it was gone. I was like this, and they were like, are you fucking kidding me? Are you fucking kidding me? Just, just, yeah. just imagine, just imagine being in New Orleans where you got all these SEC fans that yeah. come to the game, and you, like, as a Utah Ute, it's like, we Mount West. Like, you see a SEC, you see LSU. Yeah. You, you see a couple of Arvin uh, fans and different things that's like walking around. It's like, hey, they hold it down for Alabama. It's like, no, nah. it's like, we came for y'all. Like, yeah. We want to support Utah. Like, we want yeah. y'all to win the game. Yeah. It's like, like, you know, you had LSU fans trying to buy us drinks. Like, and like, this is like the week of practice. And then, like, you had like another, like, you had, I remember another LSU fan I was like, wait, wait, we can't give them drinks. We want them to win. It's like, <laughs> give them some water. It's like, okay. <laughs> but it was, it's just like crazy how, like, seeing that big dynamic of like, the SEC is powerful. It's yeah. a lot of money there. When things happen, they're not fucking happy. Yeah. And they wasn't happy about Nick Saban transition from leaving LSU mm-hmm. to going to the NFL and then saying he's never going to coach college and he bounced back and uh, go, to, go to Alabama. Alabama. Yeah, then you had Tennessee Boat fans that was there. I was like, yeah, we don't like them because I guess the tradition of SEC runs yeah. way deeper. And, um, yeah. you know, it was still good, though. Like that yeah. week of like, we knew we was gonna whoop that ass. Yeah. Like that we we knew defense wise. We yeah. never paid attention to offense. It was like Brian Johnson got offense, but we know we had a feeling that Brian can struggle. Like yeah. we seen it all fucking year. Where he had some games where it's like on defense, we're like, damn, 
Like they scoring on offense because we haven't even stopped. We haven't even stepped on the field yet yeah, because of yeah. interception or a fumble. So we already knew, like defense wise, we gonna stop their ass. You know, we gonna get it. We gonna get them. You know, and it worked out really, really well. Yeah, man, that's awesome, dude. That game was that game was awesome. That win, I remember because Matt, you know, <clears throat> Matt was on that team, Asiata, mm-hmm. and uh, I remember they caught his mom and his younger brother Sean. And Sean was a, Sean sitting there shouting out snow college uh, <laughs> on live TV and like everybody's probably like the hell was snow college. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I, I think that whole whole Salt Lake Valley was lit up. Probably the whole state of Utah was lit up when you guys won that game. Man. I think right? I think it was the whole state because they yeah. voted. We we seen the voting of results of like who's gonna win this game and. Yeah. It was only Utah that was red. Everything yeah. else was blue, saying that um, yeah. Alabama was going to win. Wow. Like, we seen it, and we just was like, all right. Yeah, like, yeah. There was no motivation behind it. It was just like, all right, we see it. Yeah. You know, Coach Will trying to figure out, how can I get y'all pumped up? It's like, we're yeah. good. We're good. We're going to be cool. You know, be yeah, cool about yeah. it. <laughs> cool, man. Let's talk about your family, man. The, the yeah. siblings. Your, uh, um, I. So, I know uh, uh, a little bit just – a tiny bit. Now you lost your father, um, mm-hmm. and then your mom basically grew, uh, raised you guys. Yeah. Um, you talked a little bit about that earlier, um, and then you you were talking about you before this. You you know your brothers and um, playing college ball mm-hmm. and stuff like that. But give us a little background of your yeah. your family. Well, um, you know, um, shit. My father he was killed when I was six, mm-hmm. and um, my mom took care of all seven of us. So five boys, two girls. Damn. Um, I fall flat in the middle. So yeah. I fall flat in the middle. I'm that middle child. So I got yeah. that middle such middle yeah. child kind of syndrome, I guess yeah. they say. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm in the middle. Um, I got three older brothers. My oldest brother's name is Hassan. We call him Sonny. My second to the oldest is Wayne, but we call him Mac. And then my brother that's a year older than me, his name is Elijah, but we call him EJ. Mm. Um, and then it's me. Then it's my younger sister that's a year behind me, Kaywana. Then it's my other younger sister, Michelle. Then it's my youngest brother, Charlie. So we like, you know, we kind of spread. I say we 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 spread out towards the end, but then we still like really close in age wise. But um, you know, when you growing up in the inner city, and you know, you hear stories about um, the Watts, the, the Watts yeah. riots, yeah. one of the big riots yeah. that happened. Yeah. Like my mom, she shared stories here and there. It was like, yeah, your dad, you know, like he. He was one of the ones that was still in, like he did, but he was still in for the right reasons, I uh, guess. Like he went and like hey, when you had the he, opportunity to loot, you know, know right? Yeah. You can't afford yeah, it. You can't. Like, he he, you know he went. Mean? He didn't just win. Just like just like steal whatever it is. You can steal. No, yeah. he went and and like uh, grab clothes for all of us. Uh, he did grab a TV, from what I heard. He grabbed yeah. a TV because he didn't have a TV in yeah, the household. Yeah. Um, you know, like the things that he was he was. I guess stealing or thieving at that moment. Mm-hmm. It was things that was practically stuff that we couldn't afford that he wanted to make sure that he wanted to give us as right. kid, you know, as the, the, the dad, you yeah. know. And then he was that old school like that, that like I work, you stay at home mm-hmm. with the kids. You know, he from my mom's saying that's what he always had. So when we lost him I like that. When we lost him, it was it was a shock for my mom. You know, it was it was it was tough. That's why I was it was tough. Um you know, my mom had to not start over, but she had to um, figure out how she's going to take care of us, you know. And, um, you know, uh, my mom went through that that phase of um, alcohol abuse. Mm-hmm. You know, she went through it because she just didn't know how to handle And I mean, and I, me being older, I can see how that can happen because when you have a husband, that's really the bread, not the breadwinner, but he's like, look, I'm going to take care of everything. Right. And it's the man he, to have. Yeah, yeah, and then all of a sudden he's just... You know, you get killed randomly, and now it's like it ain't no, it ain't no plan. You yeah. know, it ain't no like okay, we we getting ready for you to pass away. No, it's just like like some Hispanics killed him, shot him six times, mm-hmm. just to try to steal a uh, steal a check. You know, from what that's the story that I've heard growing up is trying to steal a check, like shot him six times. It's like shot him six times, but now you got to remember that my mom is like in this like wait, this happened. Yeah. Now I can't just like. Like, I can't, I can't grieve because mm-hmm. I have kids. Mm-hmm. I got to take care of them. So she did go to the bottle and like, 
the alcohol abuse, all type of abuse you can think of was yeah. just like happening in the household. Mm -hmm. But me being older now, I can completely see like that's a damn shock, man. It yeah. hits differently. And um, you know, she took she took care of all of us. None of us, none of the game bangers, but we had a lot of game banger friends. We yeah, had a yeah, lot of yeah. them. We had yeah. a whole lot. Oh, yeah, you know, my uncles, uncles, family members, uncles, family members yeah, too, say, uncles and cousins. Yeah. yeah, they natural. That comes yeah. with it. But um, you know, she did a wonderful job. And like my mom is my my super my super mom. That's why I say because for her to go through what she went through and to take care of us and we all like as a family we're still here. Yeah. None of us has been like jail jailed up a long time or anything. It's like you know it's kudos to her because yeah. she has like stepped in and had Shout to, out do. to super mom. Uh, yeah, like she mom. she had to and and she always have told us where it's like being a mom to y'all was like. It wasn't a job. It was like, I brought y'all in this world. I need to make sure I show y'all exactly what your dad mm. pushed pushed out of me into y'all. And this is what happens. Mm. So it's, it's just been, you know, it makes you think about things when you start thinking about, you know, back then, like if a dad, if my dad was at the game or how would this happen? I was, yeah. But my mom, she was a discipliner. I mean, she whipped my ass. Yeah. Like, you know, she she tried her best to love me the way that she wants, that, that she felt like that would work for all of us. Mm -hmm. But you got to remember, she had all boys for her. So it was yeah. like a little, it was yeah. tough love. Yeah. But I knew that she loved me. I knew that she would discipline me. I know that she, when shit happens, she can, she can fight, yeah. you know, like she can get things, she can get things done. You know, yeah. That's how she always been. But, you know, in reality, living in that household, growing up in that, it would be very damaging for somebody else to grow up in it. Right. But then for me, I thought it was normal. Everything was just, yeah. this is normal. Like, inner city, single parent, yeah. that's like normal. It's nothing different. Yeah, well, there's four jobs, right? Oh, yeah, my mom did a whole lot. Like, yeah. so, at one time. She, she yeah. didn't did, like, she didn't did construction. She didn't did roofing, banking, teaching. Yeah. She's a nurse. And she had done, like, it all. But, you know, it's just, you got to survive. Yeah. You, know, it's, you have to survive. And for her, she have to feed us and make sure that we're good. And yeah. it was nights and days that I could remember where, you know, she probably fucked up, but she still made sure we get to school on time. Yeah. She made sure we eat. She made it, she might be fucked up. She might not be here, like you know. <laughs> but I think her awareness was like big enough where it's like I got these kids. I got to make sure they get to school. I got to yeah. make sure they get dressed. And I got to make sure I feed. Make sure I protect them. Mm. And you know, just how it was. Yeah, you know? man. Uh, Jeremiah was a big influence. Obviously, a big influence. Huge. Yeah. Huge, yeah, huge. Like it's, you know, it's is. You don't want to think about those days, but now since I'm being, I'm getting older. I gotta remember my mom is getting older. Yeah. You know, so it's gonna be a point where you know God is gonna call an angel. Yeah. yeah, it might be her, and I don't know what I don't know what's gonna happen in our yeah. in our family. I don't know. Yeah. We really close. We talk and That's all that, good. but she is the blood vein. Right. And she's the heart, she's the brain, she's the everything to yeah. me and my brothers and my sisters. So awesome. I don't know, but we like, you got to stay alive forever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think we all want our parents yeah. to stay alive forever. Yeah. But, you know, things is going to happen right now. She is a little sick, but it's, it's you know, it's like things, it's going to be okay. It's going to be yeah. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Shout out to Super Mom, <laughs> man. I love that. That's just, you know, hearing that and, and where you're coming from and the stuff that she had to, she had to go through to raise you guys, you know, the single mom, uh, inner city. I mean, Watts is no joke, you know what I mean? I mean, we all know what how Watts is, uh, and it's, I mean, it is what it is. not a very good neighborhood to grow up in, you know what I mean? But you start Before believing it's normal. Yeah. Because it's, yeah, yeah, there's nothing exactly. outside of yeah, it. Like, yeah. you don't know shit that's all. Like, I know a couple of homeboys right now that's 34 that has never left the hood. They yeah. have never left it. And it's like, yeah. bro, it's a bigger world. You know, but the opportunities of getting getting out is very small, and that's what uh, and that's incredible for you because now you're able to go back mm -hmm. to your city yeah. and be like, hey, there are opportunities outside of here. Yeah, I didn't put yeah, a couple. I homes, can show you. I didn't yeah. put a couple homes that came up and like, that's like, cool. man, like shit is different. It's and that's like, what it's all about. Yeah, it's like it's different, yeah. a good different. And it's yeah. like yeah, it's a, it's like a relaxing like. I ain't got to be on my toes or be on my P's and Q's all the time. Right. It's like, yeah, or I ain't got to worry about walking out the house wearing the wrong hat or wearing the wrong color. It's yeah. like, it's so different. And I done brought a couple of homeboys up here and they just be like, man, this is like, relax. I like this this right. feeling. Yeah. I ain't got to worry about police. It's like, you still got to worry about them. <laughs> right, but right, it's right. just like, it's less, it's less effective when you outside the hood because yeah. anything is different yeah. when you're outside the hood. So, yeah. Uh, Dang, <laughs> 
That's awesome. Well, that that being, you know, since we're talking about that, with you being from Watts and coming to Utah, of course, the transition of uh, uh, race is different. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You were talking earlier, it was like, damn, when I came here, it's a whole lot of white people. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's, a, that's the first thing that was in my mind when I first moved over here. It's like, there's a lot of white people. I'm used to, mm-hmm. you know, not being a lot of white people around here. And just with the things that are going on, you know, we have the George Floyd thing and, exactly. we, you know, uh, uh, and the riots and everything. Just give us your thoughts about, you know, like, what, what are your thoughts and feelings and what are um, some advice to some people that just kind of keep the peace, you know, mm-hmm. uh, 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 just in your community and whatnot. So, I mean... That's that's always like a sticky, mm-hmm. sticky subject. Like it turns yeah. into like yeah. people start like it, it's like politics. Oh, yeah. oh my god, yeah. talk yeah. about politics, yeah. you know? Like, but I mean, for me and my opinion and the way that I feel about how everything happened and everything was going on, um, always told myself that um, you know, growing up, I started to understand that there's uh, good people. Yeah. There's bad people. Yeah. There's good police officers. There's bad police officers. Skin color don't mean shit. Right. Like, you could be a bad person, black or white. You yeah. could be a good person, black or white. It turns more into, like, making the right decisions. Mm. So, for me, you know, I always try, like, it was never, like, the black the, the black movement of, like, okay, like, you know, black lives matter and I'm out there. Doing, it's like, yeah, I understand and I, can, I fully, completely understand it and fully support it. But you can't, like, it's certain ones where fuck the pigs, fuck the cops. It's like... You can't say fuck all cops. Like yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I didn't have an asshole cop in Torrance, California, and like if you know Torrance, the sheriffs they assholes. Like yeah. I mean, I, I, <laughs> it's just life, you know. They, they, they're, they're all the uh, officers I have ran into in Torrance has been assholes to me. Where it's just like I hate you. But I get out here in Utah, and you'll think that it would be like. A white cop pulled a black person in Utah. It's like I'm about to give him. He about to, oh, I'm about to take his ass to jail. Uh, no, I didn't have some cool officers where yeah. I know that I was doing things completely wrong, and he gave me the benefit of the doubt, or she gave me the benefit of the doubt. Where right. it's like, you know what? I'm gonna give you a warning. And it's like, you really gonna give me a warning? You know, and it's like, good cop, bad cops, but it's good people, bad people. Yeah, like it. That's to me. That's what it all turned into mm-hmm. is good people, bad people, because. What happened to George George Floyd was wrong. It was wrong. It was mm-hmm. wrong. Completely wrong. Mm-hmm. That officer was wrong. But then you got to run a little bit deeper. You can't just say like, oh, George Floyd was an angel. Or George Floyd was like terrible. He was he was this, that. Yeah. What about that officer as well? Yeah. Was he an angel? Was he bad? Yeah. Or what about the other people that was watching it? Yeah. Like, you know, it, tur- it really turns into like the character of that person. So that's why I always lead and tell myself that it's good people, bad people. Yeah, yeah. It's like you might have a fucking uncle that's still in cable. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uncle that's still in cable. But are you gonna snitch on? Yeah. You know what that turn is like. So, so if you ain't gonna snitch, does that make you a bad person? Right. You right. probably ain't never did anything bad, but you never said about what your uncle was doing. So does that make you bad? Yeah. Does that make your uncle bad because he's doing that? Probably he's doing that because he needs to be able to watch the news mm. for certain shit that's really important for his job, but he can't afford it. Does that make him bad? Mm-hmm. See, so it like it it, it it dives way deeper, but I always told myself that good people, bad people. You can have a badge, you ain't gotta have a badge. Good people, bad people. It's fucking tough. Yeah. But where do you place yourself? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know? So yeah. that's how I'm at. That's where I'm at. Yeah. Yeah. No, thank you. I you know, I I feel the same way. I think everyone just needs to I think the world needs more, you know more people to learn respect and love, you know, and get to know. I say educate. Get to know, yeah. I say exactly. educate. You got to educate yourself on different on different backgrounds, different religions, different colors, because at the end of the day, y'all might have something that's really, really in common, but because yeah. you so, I say thick-headed or, or, or you like ignorant, yeah. you don't even want to listen to this person because... The skin because the color of the skin. Yeah, so I think you might have something that's really like that might like combine. She this might be a cousin. Like you know, this might be something where right. y'all could bind on like a whole nother level. But you so ignorant, you don't even want to do it. Yeah, like yeah. that's why it always makes me feel like man, you gotta have it's 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 good and bad people. You don't want to hang yeah. around the bad people. Yeah. you might have a couple bad people, but you know, yeah. it's just one of those. Like yesterday, we went to uh, 
What was that place? Uh, chicken fried or fried chicken? Curry fried chicken. Curry fried, fried chicken. chicken. Mm-hmm. It's delicious. You know, we walked in there and there it was uh, Pakistanis uh, that were cooking. Welcomed us with open arms, man. Loved it that we were in there eating their food. You know what I mean? So that's, that's good people. You know? Man. And so yeah. it was just just kind of like that. Got up and said, thank you. Your food was great. You know what I mean? And so it, just something simple like that. Like we, we didn't go in there with no judge. They didn't judge us as we walked in there. You know what I mean? Yeah. They just yeah. knew, like, these boys are big. They look like they want to eat. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's it. They didn't really see the color of our skin or who we were. You know, mm-hmm. they just knew yeah. that we were guys that came in to eat. And I love people like that because yeah. there's no judgment. Yeah. Like, as soon as I tell people I'm from South Central, the same people that was really nice to me, I say, like, yeah, I'm from Watts. Like, I'm inner city. Oh, oh, oh well, yeah. uh okay like all of a sudden shit kind of changes like you can still talk to me normal i'm gonna talk to you normal i respect you right, right. i'm not running around here trying to kill you or nothing like but that's the that's the constant that, that's the that's the mindset that they hear from yeah. watching tv and things media yeah like you know we was mentioning off screen media yeah. media plays a big a big a, a big, big part part in like part. like picture painting this picture of what's happening and yeah. like you have to like Take it in and see like, well, that, that yeah. good is bad. Yeah. It's like, well, it's good people. Yeah. Uh, see, so no judgment. That's how yeah. it always should be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. Um, the athletes of today. Okay. College or NFL? <laughs> well, shoot. Let's, let's, just, let's just go with high school, man, because it's just incredible. I've been the high school coach for six years. Um, I don't coach anymore. Um, but... When I was there, man, there was just a lot of programs that these high school kids can go to that are making them bigger, even faster, even stronger. It's amazing to see how fast these kids are, how big these kids are getting. I've seen some big-ass linemen, high school linemen, that when they, they stand by me, I'm like, Dude, you should be in the league. <laughs> you have, you have uh, league potential body you know what i mean like your girth is so damn big like how how do you get so big but it's not it's not the size it's the programs that they're putting out there for these young athletes um that are you know getting all this and this you know when i was young we just went out to the track and ran 40 yard sprints that was it you know we went in the weight room and just lifted but these guys are in there's actually programs out there and, and you know, now they have that sports city out there where you can uh-huh. actually go to school half day. The rest of the day, it's all training. Uh-huh. Yeah. That, I mean, yeah. the only thing you heard about someone doing that is just college. You went to college, college and did yeah. that. Or you remember that? That's what we did. Yeah. I mean, just, uh, you know, your thoughts on the athletes of today. And you can even go into uh, college and, you know, and NFL as well. I say, like, um, the athletes today, is, it's, I was just having this conversation with um, one of my one, – my son – one of my son's teammates, because he played flag football over at um at Murray, over by the Murray Boys and Girls Club. He played flag football yeah. there, and one of the parents was just like, "Your son not playing tackle football? Like, why is he not? If you played in the NFL?" And I explained to her that it's kids that's that's bigger, <laughs> like it's kids that's like legit, like have an NFL body. And, and if they and if they really want to get up, yeah, yeah pop one, if they really want to get upset, like they can hurt my son, like, yeah. like without even trying to, but they yeah. just upset. Yeah. And I was like, I just, you know, like thinking about that, it's like, man, like it's like I know a kid right now, and I'm not even like BSing you, like I know a kid right now at 6'6, 195. Wow. 14 years old. 14. 14. Like, and, this, and, and, this, and this is one of my family friends. So this is like a current family friend. And and it's weird. It's weird when you see him because he's bigger. Than, he's he's a he's a, a human. And I'm, he's, a, no, he's a human. He's an adult too. You see him? It's like, like I'm like I gotta look up at this this kid. You know, yeah. he adult. And they came and they came and stayed at our house for like a couple of days. And um, you know, I'm just like you know, I have to remember that it was moments that I'm like, this is this is a kid. Yeah, it's, a it's a it's a child. Like his yeah. mind is not developed with his body. Yeah. He's just a big ass kid, yeah. like six, and six. And he don't even and he realize. Don't know. Yeah. Yeah. He don't know. So, so he's playing with some of the fourteen year olds and like playing with, playing with my son Aiden and they're roughhousing and then boom, Aiden get a little bit hurt and it's like you know I'm like like you're not any like I'm really sorry. I'm like no, you're not hurting him. It's just you you're just bigger. Yeah, just you know, you're just stronger and bigger. Like you know, and he didn't know like his mindset is still a fourteen year old yeah. and. 
I have to reframe myself from talking to him as like a, like a, a college kid. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, like a man. Because it's like, dude, you know, you're a kid. So I got to like break things down as in like a kid form. Mm-hmm. But it's hard to break things down in a kid form when I got to look up at this yeah. this kid. Yeah. You know, so seeing that, like with some of these players that send high school, that's solid. Yeah. Where it's like, all you got to do is just get good grades. Shit, yeah. you're going to make it through college and yeah. everything else. It's scary, but then I tell parents, like I was talking, like I was mentioning, I told that one parent that was talking to him, I said, look, well, my kid, he's going to play football like around 12, but he ain't going to just play just straight football. And yeah. that's the thing that I say that cut kids short because these kids that has these amazing physiques, that's like they're they're built to play football. Like, oh, yeah, that person built to play football. Yeah. Let the kid be a damn kid. Yeah. Like, don't sit up and, like, say, and, like, you only going to play. Don't don't one trick pony him. You only yeah. going to play football because you're, oh, man, you're right. this, just That is, like, as a parent and as a as a coach, as anybody, I always tell them, let the kids do everything else. They'll find out what they're good at. Yeah. You can't fucking force them. I let agree. them find out what they're good at. And if you're forcing them, that's just going to make them hate. Yeah. what they're doing uh, so if yeah. you really want them to be a football you want them to be the best football player and they got the body and it's like oh yeah he's gonna go here let his ass do what he want and i guarantee you that he will respect you more yeah. knowing that you allowed him to do everything yeah. and you also helping them you know there's only one sport that i'm that i'm forcing my kid my son to do i hope it's golf <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, it's, re- it's wrestling okay okay wrestling. Wrestling. he plays baseball yeah. too okay. yeah. and then the one sport that i do not want him to play which he already asked me if he can play next year is football See, and I I'm wanted in the him to go away from football. I'm in the middle. Like, I, I told my kid, like, I'm like, you're not playing tackle football until you're about 12. And then I also got to know that the coach is coaching the right technique because exactly. it turns into you teaching the damn kid the wrong technique because yeah. you're a coach that, oh, I know football that right. never even played, yeah. but I know how to tell them to do this. And you teach them this fucked up technique. And they think in their life that this is the right technique. And then they wind up getting hurt yeah. or wind up hurting somebody else. Yeah. And... It's because it goes all the way back to like what the fuck the coach was teaching you. Yeah. See, so that's where I'm at with my son. It's like I'm not yeah. I'm not worried about tackle football. Like yeah. shit, we gonna play flag until you feel like you don't want to do it no more. Exactly. Because flag, you play every you position. Can play. Yeah. You you learn how to be fast. Yeah. You learn how to be agile because yeah. they gotta get the flags. Yeah. And then you can't coach height. And you can't coach heart. And I mean, right. and I understood that in NFL is speed, heart, height. You can't coach none of that shit. Yeah. You can't just like, oh, this kid is short. Let me bump him up. Let me, let me get him right because he's going to get bigger. Yeah. You know, or this kid don't want to play football. He ain't got yeah. the heart. Oh, let me, I'm going to build this heart. He's going to be, no, you can't do that yeah. shit. If a player is slow, he's fucking slow. Yeah. It's like you, you can make him a little bit, but he's still slow. Yeah. You know, um, those are three things that you can't coach. You can't teach it. Yeah. Flag football for my kid is going to be the one that I'm going to continue to push through. He's going to be a yeah, jack of all trades. You yeah. get to learn every position. Hey. Play quarterback, running back, offensive lineman, defense. You playing everything on defense. It's like yeah. shit. You become good and you start understanding the game. Yeah. But I want a coach that's going to teach the right technique because I ain't teaching. I, I, need, ain't, I, need, uh, I ain't coach I need, my son shit. I'm need, trying to stay away from it. I need to talk to you about that <laughs> flat football. Maybe my son need to come over there first before playing. Throw him in. Just yeah. see, how he, see how he like it. Yeah. Like, I got shit. Like, we, like yeah. I, I enjoy I enjoy all the kids because you know which kid really loves Love the game yeah. by playing flag football. Yeah. You can see which kid loves it. And yeah. you can see which kid is only out of here because they mom and dad, like yeah. you gotta get out of here. Yeah. But that's the difference. When you go to tackle football, it's hard to see it mm-hmm. because you might have a kid that's like, oh, I'm all about hitting, you know, yeah. I'm about to I wanna, I wanna yeah. run over everything and do yeah. And then if his ass get hit the wrong way, yeah. shit. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah. Like, I don't wanna play yeah. football no more. My son, I want him to <laughs> rep me and my brothers, we all wrestle. And then my dad uh, taught us how to fight. You know, we would always have the gloves and everything. And so with with fighting and wrestling, kind of went together because you got to learn how to protect yourself. We're not always going to be there. Your friend's not always going to be there. You're going to have to mm-hmm. learn. So that's why I want my kid, my son, to wrestle. All my other kids, even my daughters, they all hit the mitts with me. They all know how to throw the mats. Mm. Yeah, so you got me combinations, <laughs> everything, you know what I mean? And we do cardio as well. We don't just, that's you good. know, on the mints, we do cardio as well. Um, so that's why I want my son to, because every fight that I believe uh, ends up on the ground. So with my son, I have a feeling that my son's going to be that that boy that's always going to be in a fight. <laughs> he's never going to tell me, you know? Um, he's just going to come home with freaking scars on his face or whatever bruises. And, but but, but uh, there's one thing about wrestling that's good that's like, I know some NFL players that um one of them, 
one of them was a D tackle. And he's a firm, he had a twin brother. Yeah. They both wrestled. They yeah. re- they wrestled for oh, Iowa, yeah. Iowa State. And yeah. like I used to always have like a biggest like like man, like this motherfucker get double team and he never hit the ground. Like, how the fuck Carl Cool, that's my boy. Like I'm yeah. like, how the fuck is he getting double teamed by two, three hundred pounders? And this motherfucker never hit the ground. So I like literally had to ask him, like, hey, like, I'm never gonna get double team. Like, I'm out of that picture, but watching it on film is so impressive. So I'll have to mm-hmm. like, I'm like, Carl, like, how are you doing that? And he said, wrestling taught me. Yeah. I was like, wait, what? He's like, yeah, wrestling. He said, I learned how to leverage my body. Yeah. And I learned how to All move. About leverage, yeah, he, yeah. He said, I learned how to move and, under, and like move my body and like pin it up against these 300 pounders yeah. where they trying to double me. I yeah. never hit the ground. I understood that the ground was damaging because wrestling taught me that if you're on the ground, if you're anywhere on the ground on your back, you're possibly going to lose it. Yeah. See, so he said, I just kind of learned. Yeah. And I said, damn. So you learn all that? He said, yeah. And I learned hand hand combat. He, yeah, said. Yeah. he said, hand combat. I started to understand, like, before the office line even punched, I knew what I wanted to do to get around him. Mm-hmm. I said, yeah. damn. I'm like, that's crazy how one 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 thing of rest, wrestling can yeah. help you improve for football. Oh, yeah. So that's where it goes yeah. back into that play yeah. every sport. Yeah. You yeah. never I, know what yeah, can be time, good. Yeah. You never know what can help you. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. when he taught me that, when he told me that, I was like, man, like, this is you in the NFL based off of wrestling. Yeah. He said, yeah. Yeah. He said all wrestling. So I do wrestling in the off season. Yeah, and that and that's what's incredible for me to see some of these athletes. They they might not may not be good because I've seen I've seen some poor football players. But man, they get on the baseball field. Damn, these guys are bad. I you know what I mean? And I've seen I've seen others where motherfuckers can lift a weight room. They yeah, can, they can, oh they, yeah, they, yeah. They, they, they I've bench, seen a lot of yeah. those. They, they, they can bench press <laughs> five hundred. They can squat six hundred. They get out there on the field. Yeah. They get, Around. Yeah, like, yeah. Bro, like I'm, I'm 180. Yeah, like I'm yeah. in college 180. You, you out here like, like I can see you bench press yeah. everything, but you can't move this motherfucker. And I'm moving. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> One of my brothers is, man, dude. I'd be in there benching 315. You know, pull on another plate. Da, da. My brother's over there doing a plate. <laughs> and we go out to the football games. This motherfucker's tossing, dude. Hey, yeah. Hey, uh, and I'm bigger than him. And this guy's over there just tossing. That's how like, it is, man. What the hell, man? That's Can real. I get some of that natural strength? <laughs> I got to actually work for mine. Damn. Yeah, man. That's incredible, dude. Man, uh, shoot, before we end, man, <clears throat> I want you to, uh, you know, and I'll talk about it too, man. Just give me, uh, give me your meaning of student first. Oh and yeah. then athlete. Oh, see, you know, so, being being a student, man. Yeah, like that's um, I, that's another conversation that came up with the six six uh, yeah. kid that I was talking about. Yeah. Like, yeah, so um, that came up, and it was um, she like her his mom, which is um, uh, friends with my girl, and like she and I was like, I need his film. I want to like yeah. start like showing his film on YouTube. Like I'm like, cause he. And he's a body, like he's gonna make it. Yeah. And she said, I hope you make sure the student, like he, he needs to understand the student. And I said, Yeah, I completely understand it because as growing up, I was an athlete first. I was like, Man, fuck school. <laughs> school like, like, in class? Straight up. You better hope. You better hope that I'm in class. Yeah, like, yeah. You better hope you see my face. Like, it's like shit, like I'm in. Like, I hope, but but as I start like um I heard that damaging, that big damage word. As the parents, you know, like they, they said, you probably don't even, it hit differently for me, I guess. Probably some other people too that's out there that's listening and watching. But um, I almost didn't graduate out of high school. Mm. And I didn't blame it on like bouncing schools. I just, this an asshole. I just didn't care. You know, I was like, you know, whatever, like school is whatever. Like I'm playing sports, it's whatever. You feel me? It was like I didn't, I didn't see a, I didn't see a light outside of like high school. It was just like whatever. And I almost didn't walk, I didn't walk, almost didn't walk the stage. And my mom was like, you know, I'm very disappointed in you. Yeah. Disappointing. Like that word alone, like was like, I'm like, oh shit. Like, like yeah. yeah, like it's like, oh, like, you fucked up. I'm like, I'm waiting on an ass whooping. No, yeah. it was like, it, it was like, I'm disappointed. You know, like, like it was like, it was like, I'm dis, it was like, I'm disappointed in you. And like, I'm like, man, like that was like the shit that like hit way differently. And that's when I, changed up my mindset and was like, I'm going to go to the nearest junior college. Like, wherever the nearest junior college is, I'm going to make sure to be a student first, yeah. athlete second. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, student, student athlete, student is first in that, in that, in that saying. 
athlete a second. Yeah. I was always flip flopping it. Student wasn't even in the fucking yeah. in the frame at all. It was just like, nah, whatever. But that happened in high school and that changed my whole mindset. Yeah. That like triggered I guess it triggered something that was telling me that being a student, things can happen. Yeah. Being an athlete, shit can take a turn. Right. But, you know, um during college I said I'm gonna be a, a student first, student athlete. So student first, first year I was a student. Second year, I was I want to be an athlete and continue to be a student. Mm -hmm. I was able to get my degree. I was able to get a scholarship yeah. because I took student first. Yeah. And I got here to Utah, student was still first. Yeah. Being a student, student first, athlete second. By the time I got to that junior year that we went undefeated, mm -hmm. you know, we went undefeated, I had an opportunity to go to the NFL right there my junior year. I had an opportunity. The nice. opportunity was like, they told me about my projected rounds and all that stuff. And I'm like, man, I can go make this money for my family. Yeah. But... I told myself that that paper was more important than the money. It's like getting that damn paper. Yeah. So it's like getting that damn degree, that paper for my mom was more important than anything yeah, because yeah. I told her that the student comes before athlete. Right. I was able to get my degree and then the student was able to like, I got to the highest level on the student yeah. of getting my two degrees. Yeah. And then all of a sudden the athlete part started kicking in because mm -hmm. I was drafted. See, so it, it runs deep. Student athlete, student is very, very important. You can't be eligible to, to be an athlete if you fucking up as a student. Yeah. Like if you if you fucking up as a student in life, like as the beginning of life. Yeah. How are you gonna ever be a student of a corporation? Mm -hmm. How are you ever gonna be an employee? Yeah. If you don't know what it's like to even be a student, all yeah. you understand is athlete. I need to be an athlete. Athlete. And that's how you become on top. Is you got to be a student. You got to be a student. And like NFL, from what I know, and everybody know, NFL stands for not for long. Mm. You know, you think about a career. Yeah, I like that. You know, you know that life, life starts. And I, I'm a firm believer that this shit happened to me. Yeah. I got done with the NFL. It's like now what? You yeah. know, like life don't fucking ends. Like just because I stop playing football, don't mean that the bills don't stop coming. That don't mean yeah. that I can't take care. I got I, life. You know, yeah. it's like okay. Now not I gotta get a job. Like the not for long yeah, kicked in. Yeah, the not for long kicked in. <laughs> and it's like, okay, now I gotta get a job. You know, and it's like, okay, I have to go into my mindset of like the things that I did as a student. This is shit that I'm gonna have to like, like use as a career driven guy. You know, mm -hmm. and people need to understand that that student shit is gonna stay with you forever. Right. Athlete is not because eventually people get hurt. Eventually, you you're gonna get old. Eventually, mm -hmm. your body is not gonna work, right. but your mind. Yeah. It's going to stay there. Your yeah. mind is going to be exactly what you taught it to be, which is that student mm. leading forward. So that shit is really important. That student, athlete. Student comes first, athlete is second. Mm -hmm. That shit, it helps you later in life. Yeah. It doesn't just, look, it ain't right now. That shit helps you later in life. Yeah. So I'm really full on that. Like my yeah. kids, they know how serious I am about fucking education. Right. Even though I wasn't the best. I'm like, yeah. look, y'all going to be the best. Oh, because I'm the same I, know, yeah, I'm the same I, I know what it's like to not have football and, and then... It's like now what you yeah. know, y'all. I'm like my kids will never be in that position where yeah. it's a uh, I can't use my mind yeah. to provide for the different yeah. generations I'm yeah. trying to provide for. Yeah, and I bring I you know what I bring that up because I got a best friend who son is not playing, <clears throat> and right now uh, uh, Utah High School is getting to playoffs. Actually, this week they're getting into the first round playoffs, and he might not. He's only a junior. He not might he might not be able to play, but he didn't uh, pulled him out of practice two weeks ago. Put him out of this just this last week's practice because his grades were slipping. He's a starter. He's a starter on the varsity team. But I agree with his parents. You know, my, mm -hmm. and he's not just because my best friend. Because just like how you were saying, education is a big thing for you. Education was a big thing for my family as well. My dad. Wanted us to get the best grades. The only difference was that we kind of like the first generations here in the U.S. Okay. with my pops. My my yeah. mom and pops is from the Rock, straight from the Rock, and um, he knew that education was important, but he just didn't know where to get the support, where to get the help. Huh. With us being here now, I know. I tell my kids is like, if I don't know. I will know and f to find, find someone. someone that will know wh what you need help in, in education. Mm -hmm. And so I did with, uh, you know, my oldest, you know, um, uh, she needed help in, you know, she didn't want to <laughs> love my oldest to death, but it, it is, don't worry if it's an A minus, man. She don't want an A minus. 
She yeah. want everything A's. And that, that's different. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's different. That's yeah. way different yeah. for me. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> C's get degrees for me. You know? so, I, I live by that. C's get degrees. Yeah. yeah. So, um, but I, I'm happy. For, I'm happy that my oldest daughter wants to do that because even my my uh, younger kids see that and they want to be that. You know, and so a domino effect. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Mm-hmm. And so I, I believe firmly that being a student first, athlete second. Is, it is important, you know. What but you but they help you deep, though. Yeah. They help you, like, exactly. deeper than that. Like, I tell exactly. people, like, like, if you look at the stats of, if you really want to get, like, really deep into these stats, you look into the stats of how many people that's in the NFL mm. that had degrees and how long have they stayed mm. career-wise with degrees. Yeah. Like, you have to be able to study that playbook. You yeah. have to be able to, to understand how to write notes and understand how to take criticism and right. understand how to... Like you could fail at something, which is like you fell at a test or something. Yeah, yeah. You could come back from it and get an A on the next test. Love it. You know, like it's steps and like it's steps that's in place that mean that that student can be the best athlete. But mm-hmm. you had to understand how to be the student first. Yeah, so yeah. It, it it makes sense. You yeah. know, like the more people think, but then it's some people that don't even think that way. That's like I'm just gonna go NFL. I'm gonna yeah. go NBA. It's like I guarantee your ass will bounce back and try to get like a degree. <laughs> yeah. I guarantee it. Yeah. Like you might not think you might not need it. Yeah. But when shit happens and when yeah. things stop and yeah. like life hits you yeah. and your ass is like have yeah. idle time. Exactly. What? Especially when yeah. you have a family. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You're gonna be looking at yeah. your kid and like, yeah. okay, did you get your degree, my dad? It's like, no. Yeah. That shit hit it's different. It's yeah. a different conversation. Yeah. <laughs> There ain't no application in having a family. It's just no. it just happens. It just happens. <laughs> yeah. Man. Yeah, dude, I, I just, you know, I sports, you know, uh, me playing sports through high school, you know, before high school, high school and then college has taught me a lot of lessons in life, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, I was uh, I was listening to someone who was like, you know, your mistakes in life are not really mistakes, they're lessons. And mm-hmm. you learn from those lessons. Uh and uh, it's important that you learn from those whatever you call mistakes slash lessons that when you learn from them, don't just yourself learn from them, but tell someone else what you did and, you know, uh, tell them what mistakes you did so that they don't make the same mistakes you did. And that's what I was doing with my older brothers was like, my older brothers made a few mistakes and I was able to sit back and learn from them. Mm-hmm. And then also try to figure out how to build a new role to right. like the family. So it is it's nice that you, you say that because I take every life one snap at a time. Yeah. Like because we all know if you ever played football, you all know like one play would not sacrifice the whole game. Yeah. If you fuck up on the first play of the game and you right. give up a touchdown, you still got a long ass game. Yeah. That. You yeah. still got like yeah. other plays right. where it's like you can make it better. So it's like I always live by one day, like one play, one snap at a time. Yeah. So like, you can have a bad play, but that don't mean that the game is over. Yeah. You gotta continue to do it. And then that's life. Like life never ends until till the ends ends, you know. But between between now and before that ends comes, you gotta play by play by play by play. You're gonna have good ones, you're gonna have bad ones, but you gotta be able to balance it out. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> hey man. Uh, what you getting into? Uh, um, well, where do you see yourself? Uh, probably five years, ten years from now. Now I mean, shit, doing this game. I mean, like, yeah, like, I, I, like, I, know you, I know you just, I know you just said no, one well, snap at a time. Well, look, I didn't already like. It, it made me feel good to kind of have a conversation with my mom where I was um, telling her that I was doing numbers on um, retiring. Mm. Like, when should I retire? Right. What is a good number to retire? And me being 35, being 34, sorry, I was like, um, damn, like, I get an opportunity to talk about retirement. Mm-hmm. What, what is, when should I retire? What's a good age? Yeah. You know, so so say, like, 10 years from now, I'm 34, I'll be 44. Like, I might be, like, lining myself up to fully retire. Like, I didn't already damn, tell myself. Like, what's I'm, up, man? Like, I already told myself, like, I need the... The way that the money and different things and the way that I set myself up is yeah. like, it's crazy to talk about like, I'm going to, I can retire. I can retire at 40 if I want to. I can mm. retire. And I, it's a blessing to know that I have that ability. But then me being in, being with EA Sports, yeah, it's like, do I really want to retire? Fuck like, yeah. no. Yeah. I want them to just kick me out. You know? right, <laughs> like, they right. just kick me out. Yeah. If I got to do this for 20 more years, at least I know that I'm enjoying it. I'm having fun. I'm finally living the way that I want to, and yeah. 
you know, I'm I'm blessed, man. Yeah. Like I like beginning like right after the pandemic, like it had to be it had to be like August of this year, like August of this year. Yeah. Like I finally I took a road trip to LA and as I was driving I was in a fucking Tesla and I hated that shit. I love Tesla, but I hate that shit because I had to charge the fucking car. It was, it was a lot of thinking. It was a lot of thinking as I was driving to LA. And like, I really finally like told myself that um, I'm going to live. Yeah. I'm like, I'm going to start living. Like, I've been chasing for so long of like this life that I already have. Mm. Like, it was it was crazy how I was just having this, like just, just thinking as I'm driving. I'm like, I've been chasing, like, oh, making sure I have the right job, making sure I have the money, line, make sure my kids are healthy, make sure everybody is good, my spouse is good, we're good, you know, like, at some point, life is going to, like, I'm going to get better, and this is that. It's like, what the fuck am I doing? Yeah. Like, I got a, I got an investment house. I have a house that I built from the ground up that I live in. Mm. Like, my kids are healthy. My spouse, she's amazing. We just have our problems, as you know, you should, yeah. like, yeah. you know. But the grass is never greener on the other side. Right. And it's like, at some point, things is going to work out the way it's supposed to with that. But I'm in a big ass blessing. The life that I'm in is great. Yeah. Why the hell am I chasing? Yeah. I need to start living. Yeah. And first thing I did was tell her, I'm like, let's take the kids to Disney World. Yeah. We went to fucking Disney World and we enjoyed Orlando. That was my first time ever at Disney World. I'm yeah. like... You know, like, this is something that I cannot, I would never even thought about as growing up. Right. I have always told myself, like, I, I've been, like, chasing, 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 as in chasing the life that I already have. Yeah. And I'm like, man, I'm, I'm about to, like, kick back, man. Yeah. Enjoy every fucking step that I get. Yeah. I'm with a good company. I'm going to enjoy every step. Am yeah. I going to retire? No, but shit. I'm about to do whatever I want and yeah. enjoy it like full. You kind of build your own hood, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And, and it's yeah. like it's like I'm still figuring out ways to give back to the hood to yeah. some of my homeboys by telling yeah. them about things that I'm learning. Where yeah. it's like, bro, like you can get a house on, on an FHA loan. Like this is hey, how you do hey, it. And this hey, is legal. Okay. Like, you know, like yeah. oh, you can get, like get you an LLC and use this the legal way. Yeah. But it's like it makes me feel good to know that I'm able to do that. And some of my boys listen. Some of them don't. Yeah. But it's it's good though. It's a great it's a it's a great feeling knowing that five years from now or ten years from now, I'm just living, man. I'm just enjoying it. Yeah. I don't have a plan other than rolling with what I have and enjoying the life that I do have. So yeah, uh. yeah, man. That's that's crazy, dude. It's just <laughs> you know where you coming from. Like I like I said in the beginning, just random. You, it's just like you're like just randomly he was there and he was watching. Taki was watching me. You know, randomly <laughs> someone was uh, knew so so and so and wanted me to come play. You know, in the NFL. You yeah, know? It's super crazy. <laughs> yeah. So man, you, I, I love it, man. I love your life story, and I know you're not the only one that you know that has a story like this. Plenty of others that have a story like that. You know what I mean? And for you to, you know, just take a chance. You know, risk it all. Like, hey, mom, I'm gonna go out to Utah and you know see what this is about. And <laughs> yeah, here we are. First you know? time on a plane. First yeah. time seeing snow. First time leaving my neighborhood. I was 19, about to be 20. Shit, first time, first time ever. Yeah. And Coach Taki's the one that did it for me. So Coach was, you know, love him to death, and always he's gonna always be somebody that that helped me be the man that I am. He yeah. always have. So I can call him anytime. That's the craziest thing too, being able to call a head coach. Anytime I feel like it, yeah. and when I call, he answers. Yeah. Like, no matter what it is, if he can't answer, he shoot me a text like I'm gonna call you right back, bro. Joe. Like it, it's it's crazy. Like a head coach that that does that for me. <laughs> that's awesome, Lee. and that's awesome. You still have those connections, man. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Hook mm -hmm. it up with some tickets then. <laughs> <laughs> not, not that team, but I got a Weber State connection. Like, like, Coach Jay Hiller, that's my dog. <laughs> for sure, man. Man, I, I just want to thank you personally for coming on, you know, the brand new podcast and just, you know, sharing your life and your experience, your thoughts, your feelings, man. And just vibing with me. us, man. Mm. Joe, you got anything before we close and before we shut this down or what? He's I'm a, just, he, I'm he, he, he a BYU fan. That's so, all he does. He's just like Bronco. Tuck like, his shit over here, man. <laughs> like he's a Bronco <laughs> fan. You know, like, exactly. <laughs> took that L. You know. like, we took the L this year. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I'm enjoying the conversation, man. Thank <laughs> you for being here and hanging out with us. Yeah. It's yeah. a trip, dude. So you, you, you literally broke countless stereotypes of where you come from and where you are now. Yeah. yeah so yeah. I don't know. 
you, you run into your younger self out in the street, what do you tell him? Hmm. Oh, shit. Like, uh, that's a good one because I've had thoughts about that. Like, what I what I was what I would tell my younger self. Look here, though. like, <laughs> like what, what I would tell myself is just stick to the plan. Would like, that person be surprised at where you are now? Yeah, hell yeah, yeah, hell mm-hmm. yeah. Like, cause I couldn't see, I could not see past like out of high school in high school. I couldn't see myself graduating without at least going to jail, being killed. I didn't see myself. That's a normal thing. That's normal. See, and that and that's uh, just a normal type of thing for me, but. As soon as I was able to get past that high school, I thought, okay, let me just get my degree. You know, like the goal was just get the degree. And I got the degree from my junior college. Then it was like, wait, I got an opportunity to get, go to university, get a degree. All right, let's, let's get a degree. So it was like, as the goals was getting knocked down or like the way I tell people is that as you get to the top of that mountain, you start looking for the next mountain. And it seemed like I was looking for the next mountain, the next mountain. And it seemed like it was been working. It's been working really, really well for me. And now I'm not at the top of like the biggest mountain, but I do know that I have the ability to look at any mountain in the world and be like, I know that I can accomplish hey. it. Yeah, hey. I know I can. You've seen success before. Yes, I you know. Have. Plan I, I, know how, I know that I can get it. It's like no matter how big this mountain is or how small it is, I know now that I'm confident enough in myself to know that I can get to the top of whatever mountain I put my mind to. Mm. So I'm in that position now. So as a younger self, just tell myself stick to stick to the stick to the script. Yeah. Don't worry about like not having the money or I don't know if I want to leave or I never left my neighborhood. That never was a thought. It's just stick to the strip and you never know what can happen. The only thing that I probably would change is like me being hurt. Like when I got hurt, <laughs> when, I got, when I got hurt in the NFL, I remembered that specific play. I did not have to do what I did, but what I did in that play something that was natural for me. Hmm. Lead off a blocker to go block somebody else to protect my teammate, and I wound up being hurt on that play. But it put me into this position where I learned so much more about myself. Like I learned so much more. It gave me the opportunity to grow as a as a person outside of sports, where now I'm using the sports as a leverage to make myself a better human being. So that's why I said I'll, that's the one play I was like, I'll change because I just – that play. But that play also put me – made me made me who I am right now. It did. Because if I was still playing in the NFL, I would have never known what it's like to have this struggle of being a career man or having this struggle of understanding. And I say normal people for some reason. Yeah. I don't know why I do it. <laughs> like, it's like, oh, this is a normal person. You know, like, yeah. oh, hey, just a normal person. But in reality, I'm a normal person. Everybody's a normal person. It's yeah. just we have different roles that we took to get to different spots in mm. life. But we still the same. So. Uh. <laughs> That's dope, man. Yeah. Thanks, it's like thanks, the whole man. your your story and how everything unfolds is. I mean, I look at you as a person who's constantly learning, even though there's something that, like you know, you, you're rolling with the punches and what's coming to you, but at the same time, there's always more of an opportunity to learn more and find more success. Yeah, yeah. it is, trip, dude. It because is. I mean, it's not normal, mm. but at the same time, like you said, dude, if if you're if it's something you're constantly working at. It will become like a normal thing. It's that muscle yeah. memory. Just, yeah. Just doing it. You don't think about it. You just do the shit. It's like, if you got to think about it, then you probably not already lost. Like, that's <laughs> what I say. Like, if you got to think about tackling somebody where it's like, I'm going to take his legs. No, you know, I'm going to hit him up top. He already ran your ass over. Right. He's about to go score. So you got to make a decision quick. And yeah. it's like, I'm just going to go make this tackle. And yeah. I just fuck yeah. up. Yeah, just yeah. make the tackle. And that's how, I, that's how I've been doing with life. It's like, just go make the tackle. Like, don't think about it. Like, it's shit that I know that I'm not strong at. It's things that I know that I am strong at. But you know what? Let me go see what can what is going to what is going to be. Yeah. What can I learn about myself? Educate myself all the time. Hey, yeah. <laughs> what do you think about uh? Because you guys were both talking about student athlete. Mm-hmm. Uh, right now it's kind of in the transition of college kids who can just be athletes first because the money is available. Uh, what are yeah. your thoughts on that? Like, I mean, I that did. passed you. Hey, to be honest, if you were you in this, you would go back now. Well, 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 well I kind of, I kind of like, I've been in the middle of that. In, I think it's NIL or, yeah. yeah, I've been in the middle of it. Like, oh, because your work. Well, no, 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 not no? even just work. Oh, no, okay, it's just yeah. like, like life. Like, oh, sorry, yeah, like me being, yeah. me being an athlete is like, like, I didn't know what the fuck to do with the amount of money that I got in the NFL. Like, my first check, I just was like, 
shit, I have never seen this amount. Like, I'm used to, I'm used to seeing maybe 500 at the most. Like, it's like, whoa, like, this shit is like way more than what I, I, I can't, I can't, I don't know what to do with this, you know? Yeah. As a college kid, I don't think that they, I don't think they should be getting paid. I do not think mm. they should be getting paid. I think there should be a, a different okay. way of doing it. Now, my way is just my thoughts behind okay. it. Okay, all right. My Fair thoughts enough. behind this, and this is why I say it, is because me playing at the University of Utah, my mom and my brothers them only came to two games. Because of that. Because I just didn't have no money. Yeah. I didn't have the money to pay. Like, yeah. I'm using financial aid checks to fucking buy a rental car to get the ass up yeah. for like a quick a quick second to see the game to get back home. The Utah, way that, the, the, Utah State, right? No, no, Utah. Yeah. Like, but my mom. No, but, no, no. Oh, I when mean, it came, your, your, your yep, mom, Utah State yeah, game was her first game. She surprised yeah, me. she surprised yeah. me. That was the Utah State yeah. game. But it's just like, and that was her first game. Yeah. And that's that's my senior year. That's, that was her oh, first shit. game. So I played two years prior, and this was her first game coming to a, a Utah home game. Yeah. Wow. Like she didn't went to the away games, which is like we play in UNLV, yeah, yeah. play in Vegas, yeah. then we play against San Diego State, yeah. get the money to get them up to drive yeah. up, but. The colleges and the way that this should have went should have went differently from what I feel. It's like me as a college player, if I could have been able to see my mom and my, my brothers them, like if, if they could at least came to two home games and two away games, yeah. that's free. Yeah. Oh, that shit would be oh, it would have been yeah. like I would have probably had a, a yeah. real good game yeah. knowing that my oh, mom yeah. and them oh, oh, shit, yeah. like you know what I'm So yeah. I feel like we should have paid the college athletes in that way. We should have went that route of like, it's kids that's from the inner city. That's you know you got on your team. They can't have their parents come to any of the games. But if the university like, hey, I'm gonna buy you. I'm gonna buy your parents. I'm gonna get your parents two ti- four tickets to home games, or get two tickets to home games, two tickets to away games, and we're gonna fly them up and let them enjoy the experience. And you get to spend time with your family. That man, that that that's a that's a a different type of like like man. Like you know, I'm here. I get to see my mom during the season or see my family. You get motivated. You get re re energized. You know. You get re re like. This is why you're here. Yeah. You're not. It's kids that went to college and they like leave early because they miss parents or yeah. miss their and and they don't get a chance to see them. Yeah. But shit, if you can see your mom and dad or see your brothers and sisters, that shit just like make you like this that is shit. why I'm here. Yeah. You know. And if colleges could have did it that way, to me that would have been perfect. But you know, players want to get paid. I mean, like. Kids, kids want to get paid. I understand and, it, man. I understand it. Too, but I understand po- it just because the whole Reggie Bush thing. Yeah, yeah, but politics, yeah. politics plays a big, a big way right now into like you plan sometimes. Hey, we all know like that's how it is. Mm-hmm. Where coaches might like this player more, even though this player is better. Politics, okay. but now, right. but now you got loyalty. Shit. You, you we yeah. when you playing football, you've been fighting over a girl or shit yeah. or like oh that's my clique, you know they're Shit, there's money involved now. It's yeah. way different. Oh, way yeah. different. Do you think a five star player that's riding the bench behind a senior that's been there and he's making fifty thousand compared to your ten thousand? Okay. You think he want to stay there? Yeah. Man, loyalty is ain't shit. It's gonna be like, hey, I'm out. Yeah. I'm gonna go to this university that's gonna pay me seventy thousand. I'm the face of the program, and it's like now, yeah. like the transfer portal is already like tough. Like yeah. transfer portal, people leave quick. Like kids were like, oh, I ain't getting the ball. Well, I'm gonna jump in the transfer portal and leave. Now it's gonna be like, wait, you ain't paying me what? I'm out. Yeah. Like it's no loyalty. And NFL, this this is basically NFL or college because it's NFL, NFL it's almost you have seen it. after the same. Yeah. It's almost yeah. pretty much because it's NFL players. It's like if I'm not getting paid, why the fuck I need to play? Right. And that's different because you're grown. Yeah. When you're in college, now you got the ability to say that. Yeah, you got right. the ability to fully say yeah. it. Where it's like, I'm not gonna play because you're not paying me enough. And and you think you think that coach gonna be like Oh, uh, we're gonna just put you in the back of the bench. No, it's he, hard to he, think he, about he, that. He, he, like, he'll hit the transfer portal. Oh, he's out. Yeah. He's out. out. Yeah. He's leaving. Like players now is just like saying, I'm done with the program. I'm not even coming back. I'm yeah. like out. Like that money shit is gonna play like it's gonna be a lot of a lot of disloyal kids or di- disloyal athletes where money is bad. Mm. The way that you doing it is bad. It's gonna be players that's gonna be up there fighting yeah. over shit that's like they're still loyal to the game. Yeah. Shit, no. Know. Well, I mean, yeah. no. They're not going to be loyal. Like, like, you think that you want that? No, that's what I'm saying, man. Like, if they're not getting a chance at one place, they'll yeah. go to the next place to Maybe. play the game. Maybe. Maybe. But how many, yeah. people, how many kids is going to be chasing that bread of like, okay, man, my mom, you know, we need 100000 you know, Yeah. We need, we need 100000 to get a house. You know, this program is good, but they're not paying me 100000 Okay, what about this program? What about this program? It turns into like a money thing. It don't even turn into like, like, are you good sometimes? Because you might be a player that's like, I'm only, I'm player performance based at this moment. Like, I'll score that touchdown if I get 10000 
I'm not gonna swear a touchdown, but I'll get ten dollars. See, contractual. It, it, it just turns into like I, I need me, you know, like I need the money. Like the money is good for me, and I need it. You think I'm gonna go out there on the field and bust my eyes for five hundred bucks? Yeah. No. It's like I'd rather put put the next person in. There's gonna be some kids that's gonna do that. I'm I'm about seventy percent sure. 70. I, just, I mean, <laughs> I do understand that there are kids who will probably come from a position like yours, where they're an inner city kid, and they need and they, it. They need that yeah. money to feed yeah. them, you know, whatever. Exactly. And so, like, but, but, I, but it become dangerous. Kinda, yeah. It become super dangerous because yeah. you only plan because you get paid. It's like that same athlete that was really fucking good in high school that ain't getting shit. Now all of a sudden he ain't college. He's like, look, I ain't playing. Oh, That's going to fuck yeah. up everything because yeah. like, I ain't getting enough money. Like, why I need to step out on this field if y'all ain't paying me? Like, that, that, and that's crazy because you think about it, it's going to go, it's going to lead all the way to, like, the NFL might not even have a good, a, a good a pool of, of kids to even go for now. I mean, you got this one kid that was really good, but it's like, now nah, I need the money. Who's, who's paying the kids? Is it the school and, and or is it, is it the, the and sponsors? You can go to sponsors and get some fat money, dude. Yeah. See, so then what's, thing, what's the, what's, yeah. what's uh, NIL? What is that? It's National. The, it's the name, image, likeness. Name, image, and likeness. That name oh, oh, something because I've been oh, thinking yeah. it was national something, but yeah. See, so, so your name, in, image, and likeness. You can now make your. You know, is you that a, is that a company? No, no, that it's, a, that's the agreement. It's the agreement. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so you can now so make money off of your. Like I wish those yeah, three things you just, couldn't be yeah. I wish I could have made money at Utah yeah. because when my first game against UCLA, Comcast used my picture of me jumping up getting an interception as one of their prime like website pictures. And I remember, I'm like, man, I wish they would give me a fucking discount. Something like that. I was like, I wish they would give me a discount yeah. on, my, on my bill. Yeah. Like, they didn't give me Real. shit. <laughs> they didn't give me nothing. Like, I'm like, man, like, I wish. See, but then it does make you feel like, you know, like, if this is happening, it's not if, this is really fucking happening. Yeah. Kids are going to have, like, it's going to be like, like, talk to my agent type of shit. Or yeah. Like, talk yeah. to my agent. Like, I'm not, yeah. I'm not about to, I'm not about to go, that's not my position. I'm not about to go run through that. Like, yeah. loyalty, are you doing it for the team? Are you doing it for the university? No, I'm doing it for me. I yeah. need this money. Yeah. My family yeah. needs this money. Right. But I look like doing that. Like, it's just, it, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's a dangerous. It's going to be, this year, it seemed like it's, it's not really as, Crazy. They're trying it out. Yeah, but and they also all... have people to help those who have finances. Mm. So then they can learn Shoot. how to finance. Guess what? You know, like, we had help in the NFL. We yeah. got people to help us in the NFL. I still go broke. I'm telling you. I mean, but like, if you're learning that as a teenager, 19, 18, it, as it, opposed it to learning this as like a you know a 20 something. Yeah, it can make a huge difference because I didn't know anything about life insurance. I didn't know shit about, about permanent life, whole life. I didn't know shit about this, this, all that until I got to my third job at Northwestern Mutual and I was seeing them working their clients that was like rich, rich Caucasian folks. They was rich and they had life insurance policies and things like that. I'm like, what is a life insurance policy? And I'm 30, 32. Like, what is a life insurance policy? Mm -hmm. And they taught me and it's like, oh, shit. Like, I wish somebody would have told me this when I was in the NFL. I'd, my shit would have been cheaper. And I'm like, it just would have yeah. been, like, so many different things like that. And then, like, real estate. Don't nobody teach real estate. Yeah. Like, don't nobody tell you about the ins and outs about real estate. About Shoot, how credit. to do things. Credit. credit. Yeah, don't do, tell me do how you, to do Do you know, know like, when credit. I found out about credit, <laughs> when yeah. I found out about credit, I was like, damn. Like, when I was in the NFL, I should have just fix all my brothers and sisters' credit. And then talk, teach yeah. them how to leverage it. Right, See, right. but that's, like, shit that nobody teaches you. You just yeah. kind of learn it. But if the kids can learn this, like, it could be very helpful. Very helpful. But then it's going to be some kids that's like, I ain't listening to that shit. Yeah, like, yeah. And that's how we is in the NFL. There's some NFL players that listen. We have class. We have people that this come talk true. to us yeah. about it. But yeah. motherfuckers still go broke. You see a $17,000 check, you get paid every week in the NFL. Mm -hmm. So you see a $17,000 check week one of, of whatever month. And then the next week, you see another $17,000. <laughs> you, think, you think it's like, oh, I can go trick this off. I can I go buy this car. Yeah. You know, like, then, like, then the third week, you get another $17,000. See, how many times you pay bills? Once a month. So yeah. guess what? It's like that next check is like seventeen. All right, I'll spend that on the bills. But it's like you only get paid from week one all the way to week 17. Okay. Week 17? That shit is off. Yep. You don't get off. paid no more. Yeah. That's gone. So those checks that you decide that I'm going to trick off seventeen thousand, I'm going to go do it here and like you know like you just spent the total of like what seventeen, seventeen, seventeen. I ain't good at math. Yeah. Only my son is. Like, How much is that? But you spend seventeen three times in one month, and then you turn around and spend the other seventeen on bills. You got to remember September to September to December is when you're getting paid in the NFL. Mm. Now. 
after after December, you got playoffs that can, you could probably make yeah, it, yeah. but it's only a certain amount of teams to make yeah. the playoffs. So when your ass spend up that money between September to December, this is why your ass is broke all the way to the oh, following oh, May. Yeah. Are this, they doing that? Yeah. 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 Like, people go broke. Yeah. Like, what? Ass, Athlete, because we don't know the no concept savings, of money. No. We don't know. We don't understand it. Like I said, like if you see in a seventeen thousand dollar check and yeah. you you see you ain't used to having that amount of money, seventeen thousand, and you like wait, I'm gonna get it again on Friday. Yeah, I'm gonna get it again next Friday. Like, yeah. you know what? The seventeen, I can go to the strip club and bounce this, so I can right. go buy like all I can shit like with that amount of money, I can put on down payment easy on whatever I want to. Are you putting it on assets? Or are you putting it on just like lavish shit of like making yourself look good? Yeah. And then you still wind up broke because you ain't got the bread at, like in at, at December. And now it's like then, who's gonna pay rent for January? Yeah. Who's gonna pay rent for February? There's there's March. guys in the NFL oh. that uh, get paid a lot of money, but they get made fun of because <laughs> some of the teammates said, Man, "This guy's cheap. You don't spend more yeah. than twenty dollars uh-huh. on the t shirt. He'll, go, hey, <laughs> he'll hey. go, he'll go to the thrift hey, shop and buy a whole bunch of, hey. and just save his money. It's called yeah. keep up with yeah. the Joneses. Yeah, like, if you want to keep up with the Joneses, you yeah. spend a lot of money. Yeah. My first year, I was dumbass. I was a complete dumbass. I spent so much money, and <laughs> yeah, I was just dumb. I was. Dumb. I spent so much fucking money that I didn't know anything about taxes until after the fact. Like I didn't, uh, I didn't know about taxes until my tax person was doing my taxes and was like, "Hey, you spent this amount of money this year." I was like, "No, I didn't. I didn't even make that amount of money." It's like, "Yes, you did." It's like, "No, I fucking didn't." Like it's like you really did. There's no way. I don't have a house. I don't have a car. I, there's no way I spent that amount of money. He said, "Go check your, go check your check stubs." I looked at my check stubs. Tallied it all up. I'm like, God damn. Mm. Like I spent this amount. I spent. I spent. I spent hundreds of thousands of dollars and don't even know that I. I don't have shit that's mine. Like that's when I have to like take that step back of like reality check. Yeah, like how the fuck was I surviving? I was surviving off of ten thousand a year. Like you know, in in college, like I'm surviving, like living, eating, good. Yeah. You know, I'm straight. And now it's like I got a hundred thousand. I can't even fucking figure out what I spent. Yeah. Like what? Damn. Like that? It hits you differently, man. That shit is different. Like then checks they come and they can go. Like that money can. And go you fast. don't know. Yeah, like they go you start fast. spending, you start spending a thousand thing. It's a dollar. <laughs> that's just gone. Like oh, you want a thousand? Yeah, I get it. Oh, you want five thousand? Yeah, that's easy. I give it to you. But yeah. then when you ain't got it, and it's like, hey, you remember that five thousand I gave you? Can I get that back? And they a normal, normal person. Like I would say, they a normal person. You think they're gonna have five thousand like right on hand and just give to you? Or it's like, oh yeah, I give give you back your five thousand. Mm-hmm. Nah, they probably barely got five hundred. Mm. And you actually for five thousand, they give you a hundred. That's just nowhere near what what you needed to help you pay this bill. Yeah. But that's if they even give it back to you because they change their number and disappear on your ass quick. Yeah. Family, friends, all that. So you know what happened? That money is gone. You didn't. Gave five thousand, thinking you doing a good deed, being nice, and now that motherfucker ain't give you nothing. This is NFL. This yeah. is just the hard life. Yeah. 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 Hard this, is, yeah. this is shit that I learned, like watching and like, yeah. man, experience. Yeah. This is the not for long. This, yeah, this is the shit that people like. They don't know because they got like, oh, me making this amount of money, but the same way that amount of money that you making. I ain't counting all the money that you're spending. That's not counting the three, the three to six percent that you give to your agent. That's not counting the, the three to I think it's the three to seven percent on marketing. That's not counting the the three to the the percentage of the money is getting taken away. Yeah. So that percentage has to get paid. If it don't get paid, you go yeah. to court. Yeah. You have to pay certain things, and then some that you don't. Yeah. The ones that you don't is the ones you're spending all your money. But it turns into like. I got it, so I'm gonna do it. But then yeah. when you ain't got it, guess what? The motherfuckers still need it. <laughs> they still need their money. Right, you right. ain't got it, so what? That puts you into bankrupt, or that puts you into that. I'm fucking broke. Like, yeah. I, I just ain't got it. Oh, let me go ask somebody that have it now. No, they ain't got it either because they was just like you. They was depending on your ass, so you didn't gave up this amount of money to this yeah, person, yeah. and now you need it. They ain't got it. It's like well, we in the same boat. You're back in the hood. Or you back like shit just you just rough. I would say rough. Yeah. Living living on rough edges right now. Yeah. Like shit's crazy, man. It runs it's so much deeper stuff that yeah. we can go into, but it's yeah. It's man, man, NFL is don't let the money think that you made it. That <laughs> shit can 
It's cold. Not the for long. Man. Being not able for to like, yeah. plan it out. Life, yeah. Plan it out. Plan it out. That, that 16 weeks yeah. has to turn into 52. But who's going to teach you that if you ain't never even experienced mm-hmm. it? Right. Nobody in your household has ever even yeah. had that had that budget thing mm-hmm. where it's like you've well, been able to check your check. People work at 9 to 5. People work at 9 to 5. They have that same problem. Yeah. You live in check to check. And all of a sudden... They think you're supposed to control fucking 225000 You're supposed to control this? Yeah. Like, how are you going to control this if you ain't never That's even me, had a man. thousand? Shit. First experience of that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I think. I'm all in the fucking hell. It what makes the fuck? yeah, and then you start to talk about taxes. Uh, like you try to avoid yeah. taxes because you ain't got it to pay it because you just spend so much money. Oh yeah, then then you running from the law at that point. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, it's a lot yeah. though. It's a yeah. whole lot. It yeah. is, dude. Damn. That's a trip. Thank you so much, man. Sure. Any last things or? Yeah, thanks for being out here, man. Yeah, thank you. I, I love yeah. this conversation. Yeah, now yeah, my girl's like, you know, yeah. text me crazy. It's like, Should I be on? Yeah. Kids be fine. <laughs> well, let us know where, uh, where. Let the viewers know where they can find you, follow you. And, well, uh, shit. Um, you know, Instagram. DM. For sure. him. I know, right? And I'm sliding in DMs. <laughs> 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 like, uh, uh, for sure. Uh, my LinkedIn. Well, my LinkedIn is business. Business. I. If you don't have a LinkedIn out there, get a LinkedIn. Make sure to get a LinkedIn. It's so important to connect those dots with these business people because nowadays, mm-hmm. because of COVID, um, people don't like to do the interviews. They like to do background checks through LinkedIn. What's mm-hmm. your business and things like that. Oh, wow. LinkedIn is very, very important to okay. connect the dots of sometimes getting a job, getting a career. It's mm-hmm. really, really important. Okay. Um, so LinkedIn is Robert Johnson. It's Robert Rojo Johnson. Um, easy to find me there on uh, Instagram. I kind of use my Instagram like a mixed breed. Mm-hmm. I kind of put up some of my football stuff, a little bit of motivation, my family here and there. Um, I don't I don't have a lot of followers. I don't. I, I cut off my Instagram as soon as I was done because I wanted to disappear out of the NFL. I was like, I'm done with the NFL. Yeah. I cut off everything and just wanted to just live a, a normal life. But now I'm back in that world. Mm-hmm. Um, Instagram, it's uh, Robert, Robert L. Johnson 32. That's my Instagram. And then on Twitter, I'm starting to learn Twitter. It's a Rojo32. I'm like tweeting here and there. I tweet like probably once a month, probably. Hey, we on the yeah. same boat. Right? Yeah, so, I'm, like, I'm, uh, I'm not into all the new yeah. technology. So and add me, I'm about to add you right after this. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, see, I'll talk to you once a we'll talk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's what I do. And like, reach out to me. That's what I would say. Like, advice wise. Nice. Um, I can give you the hard facts of what I've been through as experience, or yeah. I can like give you what you need, but never sugarcoat what's really out there. Yeah. You know, like this shit is really happening. This is what happens. This is what you need to do on a resume. I'm still learning all that mm-hmm. stuff as I go. And How about uh, coaching you, 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 you up to? Uh, you I, know? I help out. Yeah. But I do yeah. not want to take it serious because I got a family. Yeah. No. I mean, like, if anybody wants to, you know, uh, hey, what should I teach my kid as a DB or you know? Shit. What well, I tell them is, you be able to, you know, just. I can definitely do it. Yeah, I can, yeah, I can yeah. help them, but then cool. I let I let I let people know. Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, I ain't teaching your kid to be a fucking NFL player. Yeah, yeah. That's what I ain't doing. I'm yeah. teaching them to be a better human being. Like, oh, that's okay. why I can teach them how to be a better human being by taking some of the basics that I have learned. Yeah. I can teach them, but it's not no NFL, man. Your son is going to NFL or your daughter's going to go to NFL. Like, no, it's like in, re- in reality, in reality, everybody don't make it to the fucking NFL, yeah. but everybody's going to need a job. Yeah. Like, everybody's yeah. going to need a job right. so I can help them how to get that's there. That's cool. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. I love it, man. That's cool, man. Well, thank you again, Rojo. Thank you. Thank you. Joe, yeah. it's always good to, you know, host Catch another up, uh, yeah. Thanks for letting me get a podcast with you. Uh, thanks for viewing another episode of Brand New Podcast. Please find us on, uh, uh, shoot, uh, now I'm just brain dead right now, man. Uh, Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram on a Brand New Podcast. Subscribe and uh, follow us on uh, YouTube. Uh, our YouTube channel on the brand new podcast as well. Uh, you'll find our previous episodes on there. So come vibe with us, man. I love you guys. Thanks for your support and and everything, man. Again, thanks to Rojo. And uh, I'm new. And I'm out. Ah! Thanks, brother. Thanks. That's cool, man. Uh, I mean, Dude, it's, it's-